Today I'm going to update this host. This happens to be a ZND2100 system. Instructions are the same for, well, pretty much every system. And I'm going to show you a simple download process where it's both downloaded from the internet and installed on your host all in one shot. So this is the ESXi CLI article that's found right here. Easily update ESX CLI using this command. After backing up and doing VCSA first, key point, then you back up your hosts with that command. So let's get started with doing it. Uh, this is really a lab test, not going to be the most polished video in the world here. But we want to log in. Okay, got a little laggy there and you saw me missing some keystrokes. That's interesting. But also could just be that the machine is absolutely on its knees. So I should probably stop folding at home. And of course you can go into maintenance mode if you'd like, because maintenance mode uh, would have the same effect. So anyhow, we're about to do an upgrade. You don't want any workloads, any VMs running, just took care of that. How about this, the vSphere interface, we can look here and also see the version. So we're going from 7.0 to 7.0.b, okay? Talked about right here, it's called 7.0.b. All right, so how do we do it? Well, putty, okay, we should have no more missing keystrokes. And let's just cruise right along here. We're going to want to make this nice and wide and then paste that command. And to do that, you can double click or even triple click and then hit control C or right click and copy, whatever you'd like to do there. Right click. Now, when you do triple click, it actually pastes in the carriage return. So the command's issued immediately. So here it goes. It's hitting the internet. I'm looking at my, um, my router here and it might fail the first time. I've had some issues with some earlier tests, so we'll have a look. This is my router's network traffic. We're not seeing a whole lot going on here, but if it succeeds to do some sort of checking and then pull of the bundle, we should see that that ESX host, ESXi host, starts pulling down bits from the internet at a decent speed. And again, we're not seeing that quite yet. So we might be headed for a disk space out air, or we might be headed for success. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Done a few tests tonight. This is just one of several I've tried. We'll find out together soon enough. When it did succeed, um, I did not have the camera rolling, and I think it was about a minute or a minute and a half for this command to execute. But that was on a different system, so we'll see. This particular system, I believe, is uh has been upgraded from 6.7 to 7.0 and then now we're doing 7.0 to 7.0b so yes the exact stuff that gets echoed on the screen after it shows you all the vibs that have been touched it could vary for your situation based on your system i'm also going to take this little lull here to mention if you have hp or dell you might be downloading custom isos for those vendors or you'd probably want to be using lifecycle manager which handles a lot of this for hp and dell systems but tonight's demo here is on a gigabyte system. I also have some Supermicro, and uh, I have three different brands of ZND-based family of systems in my lab. So four hosts, this is just one of my four hosts that I'm doing um, with this particular method. The Lifecycle Manager GUI method from within VCSA Appliance, that's a better way to go, but I'm trying to show you the more universal way to go that'll work on anything, even if you don't have code, the very latest from something like VMUG Advantage Eval Experience or maybe VExpert Program. Whatever the reason, maybe you don't have access to the code. Well, this is pretty cool in that if you are web or internet connected with DNS configured in USXI host and you can see the internet, then yes, this command you know should work on any system, even the free hypervisor. That's the beauty of it. There's no fancy GUI. That's the ugly part of it. But the beauty of it is paste in this one command and you should be all set after a reboot to 7.0. I'm going to emphasize, I warned you earlier in this video to back up first. I'm not kidding. If you're in a home lab and you have zero support, which is true if you have the vExpert program code downloaded from there or vmug advantage program and you download from there that does not mean you can open a trouble ticket with vmware you do not have support you'd have to do per incident basis on hardware that's on the vmware compatibility list so those are big gotchas so just pointing that out if you do a backup first where you can image esxi on the usb to another usb and then boot from that alternative usb your rollback is super simple shoving the old usb and rebooting your right back to where you were before this upgrade potentially went wrong now, lifecycle management is the GUI that might have some rollback features, but again, the focus of this particular video is just on the ESX CLI command that I'm showing you now. All right, 
Hopefully in just a few more seconds, this thing will finish. But the fact that it's taking so long, I have a feeling we're gonna get that out of space air. So I'm just gonna keep the camera rolling in real time. I might even just publish this unedited for a bit of product feedback for whoever. And what I'll do instead of waiting an hour between runs, when the first one failed and the second one succeeded on another host tonight, this time I might just hit up air and do it again right away and see if we end up with success. That is kind of weird stuff uh, if that happens, but at least, um, well, at least I've reported a workaround to you and my article already mentions this, my article about ESXCLI updates of ESXi hosts. Okay. Um, let's see, in a few more seconds, we're probably gonna get a nasty warning about out of space. There it is, just as expected, because it took, took so darn long. So this time without waiting, I'm just gonna run the command again see what happens. That seems crazy, right? Um, and I didn't have the camera rolling, so that seems even worse. You're taking my word for it that my earlier host experience was wait an hour and then do it again and it works. So that's part of why I record stuff like this. You kind of never know what, hap what happened. And it would take me a lot of time to rewind and go back to the backup and, and do this all over and stage the video. And it's, it's getting kind of late. <laughs> and I'm running on not mm, less than five hours sleep last night, so I'm hoping this works. This is how it goes with sysadmins in their lab tinkering with code the day it came out. That's a little crazy, right? But I actually kind of enjoy this and finding out stuff and learning and then sharing. Um, this particular error, by the way, when I Googled around for it, yeah, you see some of this, E-R-R-N-O, error number 28, but I don't find it in reference to 7.0 yet. And the way the file system's laid out with 7.0 is different. So kind of crickets on the Googles when looking for a solution for this. But I suspect in the coming days and weeks, there'll be more people talking about it in some sort of reliable workaround rather than, hey, just try again. <laughs> Maybe the ESXi process, yeah, there it is, worked the second time, you just witnessed it. So I don't really have a theory on what happens there, but somehow it's cleaning up between the first and second run. And I'm kind of liking the uh, simplicity of that crazy easy workaround. Nuts, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, sure. Time to reboot. So when this thing comes back to life, first of all, we're going to see Putty Croak in a moment here. And then we're going to see on this screen, the host. You just heard Putty die in the background. And this screen's already hanging because it's, it's gone bye-bye. There's Putty croaking on us. So now we're just waiting for the reboot. And you know what? Why not? How about I give you something to look at while I'm gabbing away here on this probably unedited video. And there's the blip. That's where it pulled down the, net, the bits from the network, right? At about 250 to 300 megabits per second. There tends to be, uh, if I looked at my router, I could see actually what server came from. Whoa. Fat fingered admin? Seriously? Okay. Um, anyhow, the, if I looked at my router, I could actually see what CDN or ca content delivery network that code came from. That might be kind of interesting. Um, but at the moment, I'm trying to show you the UI. Here it goes. So the machine's now rebooting. And there it is. So what we should see is the new version of the hypervisor coming up on this screen. What are we looking for? We're looking for this. Ends in four, uh, 4942. And there it is, 4942. Okay, so this went well, I would say. And that is not the setting I was looking for. I am so sorry. I'm trying to get the uh, screen clear and I don't use IPMI or IKVM on this particular machine very often. I am forgetting where we crank up the quality of that video. Oh, well, it's slightly blurry. I'll have to deal with it. Um, what else? Once it comes up, we'll point to the host client. That's when you point your browser straight to the ESXi server, which is right here, this tab. We'll log in and make sure everything looks uh, good. You know, networking, all that good stuff. You wanna make sure you're happy with it and that things are fine and VMs run fine before you go and um, consider it, you know, yourself done with the upgrade. Because if it doesn't go well, especially for the VMs you care about and they won't start or whatever, uh, 
yeah, you can roll back by putting in the old USB, like I said earlier. And there it is. We're done with that. Now let's see if we can log in. It might be a little early for the web server to be running. Or not. A speedy machine there. It's up. And Falling at Home has actually already started, so that's going to start maxing out the CPU shortly here. So success. There it is. How about VCSA? Okay. It is not synced. It is not as happy because it just came up. Cannot synchronize. It's normal. It just said uptime in 10 days. Now that's weird. <laughs> that is stale data right there. Um, yeah, that was a little surprising. Also, it showed the CPU busy. But why would the uptime show 10 days? We hit refresh here. I suspect that data is still, oh, it's still a little stale. And then this quick stat should go away. Okay, so success though. Here's the number I really care about. 4942 is good. And then at some point this update, if time, uptime, excuse me, should show zero days. And there it is, 97 seconds. Not zero days, silly. That's it. CPU maxed out like I expected. So success. Uh, a goofy video that went a little sideways, but let it rip. Going to publish it as is. Maybe someone will learn something from it. Um, especially the fact that I have to go twice for the ESXi, ESXCLI command. Go figure. Twice is the charm. And there you go. I've documented it already. Hopefully I'll have some more updates for a more elegant solution or what's going on here at some point. But that's a wrap for now. You're able to use this video and proceed again at your own risk with your backup done first, right? <laughs> thanks again for watching. Bye now. And thanks for visiting Tinker Try IT at Home with a collection of these Fear 7 articles already for you already. <laughs>